Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. How are you doing today? I'm going to give you a complete showcase and overview of the extremely popular, action-packed, custom-made mod pack, Bolt Hunters 3rd Edition, made by the one and only Iskel85 and its dev team. Ready? Let's begin. So what is Vault Hunters all about? Essentially, the Vault Hunters mod pack is going to take you on an epic journey, traversing through a unique dimension called the Vaults. The vaults are riddled with enemies, rare treasures, and highly sought after gems that will allow you to craft machines never before seen in vanilla Minecraft. You'll be collecting brand new, powerful armor sets and unlocking amazing new abilities all found within the vaults, leveling up your character to strengths unheard of, and much, much more. As you raid and uncover the secrets hidden within, you'll improve upon your vault level, unlocking more dangerous vaults that house even more rewards and more deadly foes. There are many new mechanics you'll be interacting with, both inside and outside the vaults, in your quest for power and finding Finding yet unobtainable treasures, relics and jewels, trinkets and blessings, gems and armors, burgers and... wait, burgers? That's right, you'll be hunting for all you possibly can, but most importantly, you will embark on a quest to find the legendary artifacts. You'll need to find these rare artifacts, assemble them once more, and complete the final artifact puzzle to unlock the final reward. Are you prepared to uncover the lost treasures, obtain trinkets blessed by the gods themselves, or will you perish in the deepest trenches of the vaults? Getting started. When you first spawn in your new world, you'll notice a couple changes to your game. First, you have this bar showing your vault level, which we'll talk more about soon. Next, you'll also have this bar representing your mana. This is used when activating several new abilities you'll unlock once you get started in the vaults. Thirdly, pressing H will display a large set of stats and other strange tabs. Don't worry about these for now. Just go to the bottom right here to find a quest book. Follow this book carefully if you're new to the mod pack, as it'll help guide you through your starting play. Let's proceed with gathering resources like you normally would. Once you've gathered a base set of resources and a small place to call home, prepare for your first serious mining trip in search of new things. At Y level negative 30, you'll find chromatic iron. This is a crucial ingredient in many of your crafting recipes, both for the vaults and even for your other mods. At Y level negative 5 and below, you'll find this vault stone. Mining vault stone will drop the stone itself as well as this chipped vault rock. Combining this with some chromatic iron will give you a vault rock. Next, craft a vault altar, famously nicknamed the Volta. Place it and then place the vault rock on top. You'll notice it's asking for some basic resources, and while gathering these resources seems easy for now, trust me when I say that this is only the beginning and the resource requirements will become insane as you progress, incentivizing you to build several farms with all the new mods that you'll unlock later on. All done? Give the altar a redstone signal and watch as you create your first vault crystal. Congratulations, you're now ready to run into your first vault. Create a vault portal using the vault stone that you mined earlier and activate the portal with your new crystal. Get some food, some decent weapons and armors and prepare yourself for your first run into the vaults. On your first entry, you'll be randomly assigned a vault theme, from the sweet domains to the deep slate caves. There are over 30 amazingly unique themes that have all been custom built for you to explore and loot. You'll also notice that there's a timer at the bottom left of your screen. This is how much time you have left in the vaults to complete your objective, before the vault dimension collapses in on itself and crushes you with it. With that said, let's talk objectives. There are six different objectives you'll find within the vaults. The monoliths. This involves finding and lighting monoliths scattered across the vault. Once completed, find your way to the exit through the vault entry entrance you first came through. You built several arrows pointing back to the entrance, right? As you level up, you'll unlock access to alternative objectives, like the elixir runs, which involves gathering elixir by simply looting, mining, and killing mobs, then cashing in your elixir at a lodestone. Other objectives include scavenger hunt, which involves collecting a certain amount of items and depositing them into a scavenger altar. Hunt the Guardians, which involves activating obelisks and defeating a number of Vault Guardian boss mobs, and Cake Hunts. I'll let you figure that one out on your own. There's much more to the story here with these objectives, but I'll leave those up to you to discover as you progress. Let's now talk more in detail about what you'll find whilst exploring. There are three types of rooms you can find. Common rooms, which come in several flavors, but all contain a variety of points of interest. More on those in a moment. Challenge rooms, which hold a variety of extra tough challenges for you to overcome. For example, you have this village with massive underground crypts underneath. There's also rooms like this, or even this one with a massive dragon inside of it, and Omega Rooms. These rooms are relatively peaceful and contain a large variety of extra loot. During your expedition, you'll want to be on the lookout for what is called a point of interest. Points of interest are scattered everywhere in the vault rooms and vary from chests to mines filled with gems to coin piles and much, much more. Chest points of interest are your main source of loot, and you can find many different types of chests too. Wooden chests, containing your basic vault and overworld resources. Living chests, containing loot to help you progress in the mod pack. 
gilded chest containing various jewels, vault diamonds, and other valuables, ornate chest containing plentiful vault gear and crafting items, and the formidable treasure chest containing extremely rare gear, trinkets, and other highly sought after valuables. Your vault mine point of interest is quite simply a large vein of vault stone, and inside are multiple gems. Many of these gems will be used to craft extremely valuable items later on. There's also several new guard altars. By completing the requirements of a guard altar, you'll receive their blessing and potentially a favor. If you manage to successfully complete the following vault after receiving a favor, you'll be given a permanent reputation point to that specific guard, providing you with extra bonus perks when raiding future vaults. There's pylons dotted around the vaults as well, which provide small temporary buffs whilst exploring. There's hidden dungeons, which house extra loot, but are also extra dangerous. And finally, there's also the highly sought after treasure rooms. These rooms are especially hard to access, but contain some of the most insane loot you can find inside of the vaults. I'll leave it up to you to figure out how to access these secretive rooms. Enjoy. Next up, the mobs. The vaults are a dangerous place, with every point of interest being booby-trapped with a spawner and plenty of other mobs roaming around. You'll need to be extra careful not to take too much damage, especially as there is no natural health regen in the vaults. As you increase your vault level, higher tier mobs will begin to spawn inside, all dealing more damage than their previous tier. Not only that, but if you find a large group of a specific mob type, it means that there may be an elite mob nearby. These guys are extremely dangerous and need to be dealt with with extreme caution. Taking them down, however, will reward you with a ton of vault experience, helping you to level up faster. Finally, let's now talk about some of the modifiers you may encounter upon entering a vault. There are three types of modifiers, positive, negative, and curses. Positive modifiers include things like extending how much time you have within the vault, increasing the chances of getting rare items, and reducing the chance of finding a chest that's trapped. Some negative modifiers include giving your enemies a speed boost, increasing their total max health, and increasing the odds of finding a trapped chest. And finally, the curses. You have Frenzy, which gives your enemies some serious powers, but also reducing their HP to one, literally turning the entire floor into lava, slowly blowing up the vaults, and this one, which forces you to walk sideways like a crab. Enjoy. Progression. On completion of a vault, you'll be shown how well you did during the vault run, and at the bottom left will be your rewards, some vault experience, as well as a completion crate. Completion crates contain some extra loot as a reward for completing your objective, as well as the fabled artifact fragments that will guide you towards your final goal. If you fail your objective, however, you won't get a fancy crate. As you gain more experience, your vault level will increase. The higher your vault level, the more dangerous the vaults will be with higher tier mobs and larger vaults to lose yourself in. You'll also unlock better loot as you continue to level up, like rarer crafting ingredients, to create higher tiered items, more powerful gear, and even better chests called strong boxes. This won't be your only option of leveling, however, as you'll also have the ability to craft a vault burger, the ingredients for which will be found in living chests. Next, let's talk about skill points. Every time you level up, you'll be granted a skill point. These points can be cashed in to grant yourself one of 19 total abilities which you can use both in the overworld as well as in the vaults. Every time you cast an ability, it will cost you a small amount of mana. For example, the ability to heal yourself, or the ability to throw javelins, and dash, which allows you to jump high distances. Many of these abilities can be leveled up multiple times, each level improving the ability's main function. You can also choose to specialize several of the abilities, giving it a unique secondary effect, like throwing multiple javelins at once. Another way to spend your skill points will be to grant yourself passive talents that don't require any mana, and simply level up your base characteristics, like faster mining, increased speed, higher damage against certain enemies, and much, much more. Second to skill points, you'll also be granted an expertise point every five vault levels. Expertises are more specialized talents that enhance your experience in specific situations. For example, massively increasing the amount of experience you gain per experience orb, applying higher fortune levels to any block you break with a fortune tool, and even granting you the ability to craft an angel block, which rewards you with creative flight in a radius around the block itself. Finally, knowledge points. Knowledge points are going to be what helps you to unlock more and more mods in the future. The only way to obtain these knowledge points, however, will be through consuming a knowledge star. I'll let you figure out how to craft this on your own using the guidebook provided to you. I'll make sure to go into more detail on the mods included in a bit as well. But for now, I hope this gives you a good overview of how you'll be progressing in the Vault Hunters mod pack. The Mechanics there are three categories of game mechanics I'll be taking you through. Some general Vault Hunters editions, the Vault Crystal modifications, and the unique mechanics for all your Vault tools, weapons, and armors. Side note, all the workstations mentioned here are craftable, and their recipes can be found in JEI. 
Number one, the general additions. Starting off with Vault Potions. Vault Potions are unique potions that can be used in the vault to heal you when you're damaged. If you refuse to use one of these and instead use a regular health potion, Valora's Wrath will be brought upon you. Furthermore, potions can be upgraded through knowledge points and higher tier potions will not only heal you more per charge, but can also be given extra effects through the use of this alchemy table. Next up, enchanting. Use this vault enchanter with a little experience and some emeralds to apply all the enchantments you need without the need of those pesky villagers or an enchantment table. Now, as you defeat mobs in the vaults, they'll also drop these soul shards. These shards are picked up through this shard pouch and can be spent on the black market to acquire some juicy rare goodies. This is a bounty table. The bounty table allows you to take on contracts which if completed in the vaults will grant you special rewards like vault experience, extra gems and even rare gear. If you die in the vault, you may return with your spirit next to where you respawn. To reclaim all the loot that you lost, you'll need to put your spirit into a spirit extractor. Pay the extractor in gold coins for your mistakes and reclaim all your lost loot. Finally, we have relics. Relics can only be found as fragments within relic booster packs. If you manage to find the five fragments that all correspond to a specific relic, you can combine them all on this relic pedestal and grant yourself a permanent extra 30 seconds in every future vault you enter. Next, let's talk about the ways you can modify your vault crystal in category two, vault crystals. You can control pretty much every aspect of a crystal by combining the modifier with the vault crystal in an anvil. First up, seals. Seals control the objectives of your vault. Each type of seal is crafted from these blank seals, which are found either in completion crates or a treasure chest. Next, augments. Augments force the theme of your vault and are found as a reward in completion crates. Infuse catalysts can force a specific positive modification to your vault. For example, if you want a vault that grants extra experience or a vault with more gilded chests. To craft an infused catalyst, you'll need this catalyst infusion table and a few of the vault resources. Don't worry about these for now. By the time you're able to infuse these catalysts in the mod pack, you'll be very familiar with the resources required. With your infused catalyst in place, combine them with the crystal in an anvil. But be careful, as every time you add one, you'll likely be given a random negative modifier and even worse, you may corrupt the crystal, bestowing one of many unsavory curses on to the vaults. If you're nervous about the curse you've been bestowed, you can actually see and potentially remove the curse by combining a moat with the crystal in an anvil. Moats are extremely rare and can only be found in treasure chests, so use them sparingly. Category 3, the gear. The gear is split into two sections, your vault tools and your vault weapons, armors, and trinkets. For the tools, you can craft specialized vault tools with this tool station, requiring resources specifically found within the vaults. Your tools are tiered, and you can only use higher tiered tools as you increase your vault level, from chromatic iron, to chromatic steel, to voltarite, to melded, to black chromatic, to echoing, to the omega powerful prismatic. Why use these tools instead of your usual overworld tools? I'm glad you asked. So you can enhance them with jewels, found as a reward inside the vaults, or through crafting them at the tool station. Jewels give your tools special abilities. For example, giving them the ability to instantly mine chests and coins, occasionally making this extremely satisfying sound, or even morphing them into a multi-purpose tool, like this Paxel that can mine, dig dirt, and even chop down wood all at once. All these abilities help to make your vault runs way more efficient. And to apply a jewel, you'll want to use this jewel applicator. It helps you to easily identify whether you have enough space on your tool to apply the ability. Next, your Vault Armor. There is technically only one type of armor added into the Vault Hunter's mod pack, Vault Armor, found mostly within the vaults, in completion crates, and as bounty rewards. When first found, Vault Armor will be considered unidentified, and if you right-click an unidentified piece of armor, you'll begin to inspect it, and your character will quickly identify all its unique stats and the model of the armor. There are a ton of models to discover, by the way, and more on them in a moment. Alongside your usual weapons and armors, Vault Hunters also adds magnets, which help you pick up items from a distance, Idols, which grant you extra affinity with the specific Vault Guard, and charms and trinkets, which provide unique buffs for your character, like the ability to triple jump and plenty more. Furthermore, all these items will come in one of many tiers, just like the tools. Scrappy, Common, Rare, Epic, and Omega. Naturally, the higher the tier, the better the stats of the armor. On top of being able to find all this new gear, you can also craft vault armor through a vault forge using resources found within the vaults. At first, the armor you craft won't be the best, but as you practice and improve your proficiency, you'll be able to make some insanely high quality armor. And if you're replacing old armor or are unsatisfied with what you've been given, you can say goodbye to that trashy armor by throwing it into a recycler to reclaim some of those lost resources in the form of vault scrap, which is primarily used to create this repair core that helps to repair your tools because by the way, you can't use the mending enchantment on them. And finally, if you love your new weapon but aren't a fan of how it looks, you can use this nifty transmogrification table to pick and choose whatever model you've discovered so far. There 
There are over 90 unique armor models that you can discover. So have fun mixing and matching all the unique models and creating exactly the look that you desire. Now, there's still a lot of mechanics around modifying your tools and armors that I haven't mentioned. However, it's rather tedious to explain. And as the purpose of this video is to excite you with all the cool features of this mod pack, I have chosen to leave them out of this video. But don't worry, the guidebook that you're given does comb over every detail when you're ready. Now, if you're keen to play this board pack with friends, I highly recommend using Apex Hosting. While I am affiliated with Apex Hosting, I have genuinely used their services to create multiple servers myself. Their service allows you to easily set up a server with the Vault Hunters mod pack with the single click of a button. Link, as always, can be found in the description below. With all that info covered, it is time for my favorite part, the tips and tricks. Ready? Do you hate villagers? Right click to pick them up and place them wherever you please. You can do the same with piglins too. Thanks to Quark, you can place blocks directly in front of yourself like this. Combine the dash ability with an elytra to replace rockets entirely. This block is chromatic iron, but this block is fluorite. Try not to confuse the two. You can automate the process of making crystals with this altar conduit. How does this work now? Regret your choice of abilities? Use this regret orb to reclaim your skill points and try again. Use this demagnetizer to prevent your magnet from constantly attracting unwanted items back into your inventory. Use this identification stand to instantly identify all of your unidentified gear. Feel like a change of clothing? Use this wardrobe to switch between your favorite armor sets. If in doubt about what a specific piece of loot does, take it anyways. You may find it useful in the future. This animal jar allows you to capture multiple passive mobs of the same type. And even more, you can place all these mobs into this tiny animal pen and breed them up before harvesting harvesting all their meat. Use this sickle as your main tool for breaking chests, so you stop accidentally breaking the block behind it. Did you know you can raid vaults together with friends? Now you do. The researchers. Finally, it is time to look at all the other mods that exist in this mod pack. While I won't go into detail on every mod included, I'll be showcasing all the main ones to look out for. Starting off with quality of life additions, you have mods like Cagerium, which are there to simply help out with automating mob farm drops. Great for when the Voltar starts demanding thousands of zombie flesh. Even more impressively, you can entrap an entire wither and farm their nether stars indefinitely. There's also this Vault Compass, which is a crucial addition to your hotbar when navigating the vaults, so you don't have to worry too much about getting lost. One of the most important quality of life mods will be these pouches. Unlocking them will massively expand your inventory and essentially act as an upgrade to the shulker boxes and even the ability to hold multiple stacks per slot with these upgrades. Mods like Easy Villagers make setting up villager trading halls ridiculously simple and this block which makes iron farms a thing of the past. Or Botany Pots also automating all of your crop production. A final notable mod is the Building Gadgets and Mining Gadgets mod, made by the one and only Direwolf20. These gadgets make gathering resources and building amazing bases an absolute piece of cake. How cool is that? There's also a large number of great building mods that include a bunch of new block types and block colors for decorating your base. Even better, you can tell that this mod pack was made by a hermacrafter with all the amount of new lighting mods included in the mod pack as well. Thanks for that, Iskel. Man. Lastly, you've got your main game changing mods. While many of you have likely played through these mods multiple times, the progression will be different, as all the crafting recipes have been remade to fit seamlessly within the Vault Hunters mod pack. You have mods like Mechanism, allowing you to create insanely powerful machines. Machines that not just double or triple your vault production, but go as far as 5xing your ores. Or how about this digital miner, accessible only as a separate research. This miner sits above and with calculated precision accumulates every single ore from below, effectively removing the need for mining in Minecraft. Or there's Create, which is a mod that is so beautifully complex you can automate just about anything that your heart desires. Or how about Refined Storage or Applied Energistics too? They grant extremely powerful storage solutions and even allow you to set up automated crafting so you never have to worry about going through a chain of micro crafting recipes ever again. There's many more, but instead of listing them all, I'll let you discover them over time as you progress. The amazing part about this research mechanic is that you're never overwhelmed with too many options for progression, but you'll always have the freedom to choose whatever mod you want to play with next. None of these mods are actually essential to completing the mod pack, but are simply there to help you in your journey and make your modded playthrough feel way more rewarding as you unlock and master all of these powerful machines. Speaking of completing the mod pack, I wonder what will be in store for us in those final vaults. Hmm. I guess we'll have to wait a bit to find out. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching.